Come on this side. Next one we do is called the far side, and some of you guys were already doing this instinctively, right? I was collapsing this elbow. You can reach across and collapse this elbow. Same thing. Now I'm not behind his knee, but see how I have, um, when you look at people, you want to think of them like a four-legged table. Two legs you can see, two legs you can't see, right? Get a little bit of a stance, but you're not, don't let me push you, right? Don't let me push you, okay? Don't let me pull you, okay? He has a leg there, the invisible legs, he's easier to push and pull, right? He's easier to push and pull. So when we do this one, I'm behind his knee, right? So I have that. When I do this one, go ahead, clinch up, I'm pulling him into this void, right? And you feel, this hurts, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I got him in a pretty good America, almost Americana here. But do I have a good position to be striking a knee in? Yeah, and I can throw him, and I get a little oops on that too, okay? So what you're gonna do with this one, he clinches up, I reach across. It's so easy, so easy. One of the places I like to do this is from the belt, right? But I wanna teach stuff in a logical progression. So if we go back to the belt, he knees, bing. I take him right off the first, right off that first knee. Bing, bong, bing, bong, bong. Throw is, that right? So easy. Reach across, grab his elbow, fill the space, right? Reach across, grab the elbow, fill that space. Shoe shine. Bing, bing, bing. Go. Make sure you say bing, 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 or it doesn't work. <laughs> For 30 years, we've joked about having a seminar on sound effects. So easy, so easy this one. So it works better. So there's a detail we should teach here, guys. I want you to play with both, Matt, Matt. So ladies, watch this, okay? His feet, if I grab towards the lead leg, does it work? Yeah, now I can put my, it works, okay? I went to the leg that was back. And that void works better. Okay, this is a big part of my meanness here, right? Is <clears throat> okay. So later we do something later called the buffalo. This is part of that buffalo. Go ahead. Right, right, right. Yeah, it works. It's not the same thing, right? Right. And if you shoe shine this one, man. Reach across, grab his elbow, pull it across. No, be, be behind him. Reach that arm behind him. Yeah. So, no, so come, bring your arms back up. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. You can reach across and grab that one, yeah. This one, reach across, grab his elbow, pull it in. Yeah, now pull him yeah, now out here, out here. No, close that space. Uh, yeah. 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 There you go. How torqued up do you feel with that? Pretty, pretty torqued up, right? Oh, yeah. We're, so, that's one of these, you know, because somebody goes, how do you work that? And they go, literally, dude, do the wave. Do the wave. Do the wave. Do the wave that it's shoulder, inside elbow, back of this, back of this, boom, 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 boom. You know, it can look as silly as you want. Uh, one of the things I tell people, uh, good, well, good dancers make good fighters, right? Number one, they understand rhythm and they know how to lead, okay? Dances you should learn if you want to be a good fighter, okay? Do the wave, do that pop lock, do the robot, yep, and you run, what are you doing? It's the robot, right? Okay. And uh, salsa dancing. Learn salsa dancing. One of the things is uh, uh, I, I, I teach a salsa class, but I teach it right out of Filipino martial art footwork. And one day I was covering for my wife's fitness kickboxing class. 
and some of the ladies who never trained with me, and they, they see me, I'm pretty tight with the kids, right? It's like a little mini boot camp for the kids, right? So like, oh no, he's gonna be mean. So I come in like, I'm just, yeah, we're gonna be mean today. I'm like, okay, you're gonna do what I do. And you're gonna step, tap, bring it back. Step, tap, bring it back. And we're doing that stuff like that. And I go, okay, now I want you guys to this. One, two, three, five, six. You know, we're doing it. And I'm like, okay, now I add a little, you know, hips on. Because basically, so, but like the first Filipino martial art work you learn, right? You have this forward triangle, right? You have the backward triangle. You have a lateral triangle. And if we can tweak those just that much, and it's salsa dance. All right? Okay. Um, next up is the 50-50, all right? Matt, I'm gonna use you for this. And 50-50 um, is this. I have a hand in, he has a hand in. I have a hand on the outside, he has a hand on the outside, okay? A better version of 50-50 is to be here. Um, there's so much more to do here that I save this for our, our level two clinch stuff, okay? But what I want you to do from here, um, so we're gonna do we're gonna do the triangle, the elephant, and the buffalo, okay? And uh, and the leg belt. First one you're gonna do is the, the elephant, okay? I'm gonna reach my hand up, my inside hand. I reach my inside hand up and I wrap around his hand. I have technique if you're a wrestler, this I'm getting the wizard. Okay? I'm gonna take this arm, see how I bump it? Oops. Right? Bang, bang, bang. Right? If I my hands are connected, it's called family. Okay, so elephants are indigenous to Thailand, right? So that's using the trunk, okay? Reason they call that one family. Um, you know, like, like elephants, the way they show affection, they'll, they'll grab tail, nose to tail. Like they know elephants in the circus are depressed because they reach around and grab his own tail. That's sad, because they're smart, right? So I'm gonna take my inside hand. Oops, 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 right? Okay, so I have this wizard. Now I'm gonna bump that arm to this one. I have both of his arms right now, crack, okay? Bam, that's a great place for that inside elbow. Oops, off the shoulder, shoe shine. You're gonna have less teeth than me, right? This is a nasty throw because it's against the side of the knee, right? See where I'm, don't do that one in class, right? So I, you could sweep it out later on. You can't sweep legs out really. You can't do like, Ochi Gari and also the Gari or hip throw, but these bump throws you can do. So let's watch this one again, the elephant. My inside hand comes up. Accidents can happen. I wrap that, I have the wizard. I'm already in a better position than him, right? I'm gonna bump this that I have both arms, okay? Whap, that's when I really like this shot. Whap, bap, shoe shine. Start hitting his body, start kneeing his face, right? If you want, this is also, this is one of our, our, our throw later on called the buffalo. Right, so well, we'll get into the buffalo later. Right now, let's learn the elephant. Go ahead. There's a whole elephant series, okay? This one might, you guys might need some help with this one, right? So we're here. 50, 50, right. Yeah, you're going to take your inside hand, raise yeah. your hand up, wrap around my hand, wrap around my arm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now bump, bump that to your, my own elbow, yeah. right? Give me that inside elbow slap. Uh, Inside elbow slap. Just no, there? no, with your elbow. Slap my ear with your oh. bang. Oh, I see what you mean. Pull my head in, so you can have my head here, or you can shoe shine. Shoe some out. Yeah, keep this tight. Yeah, look at the knees you got, dude. Yeah. Bang. You got both his hands trapped and free knees. <coughs> Let's try again. Right. So take your inside, inside hand, up, wrap up, bump that over. Yeah. Here. Yeah, you got the shoulder. Yeah, boom. And yeah, and try to keep hold of both my hands because he's gonna, he's not gonna let you. So he's not gonna stay there all day, but I'll take one or two free shots and then we'll set up one or two free shots for the next segment. Yeah. <laughs> I love that inside slap. Yeah. <laughs> Your inside hand wrap around. Yup, you could just, yup, you can go that way too if you wanted. Yeah. So I went the other way with it. Yup. <laughs> Which was better, I liked it. Yeah, that's okay. So I didn't play with it, but that's our instinct, is to grab people by the head. Yeah. Like when we teach, uh, you know, we teach our Jiu Jitsu Houdini program, 
you know, it's, uh, you know, we teach, it's, you know, the escape from the holds that people do on the street. You know, people are doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu class, you know, we do some jiu-jitsu here, and people will see something at some high-level tournament, hey, how do I escape the flying Kimura, Barambola rolls, Delahiva, that, that's great. Jimmy the Crackhead doesn't do Barambola rolls. You know, he, you know he's gonna, Corn Pop's gonna grab you in a headlock and squeeze. You know, so, it's, but that's, because that's our instincts to control the head. So let's look at this one more time here, right? Okay, one in, one out, one in, one out, okay? I'm doing a wrap, right? You started elbowing here, that's fine, right? So now let's say he has that hand free to punch, okay? Maybe I, maybe I pass it to this, maybe I arm drag it to this, right? I mean, and he's not gonna stay there, but we're gonna get in some free shots, okay? So we're here, I'm here, right? Boom, you were doing this. If we can do elbows, yeah, sure, just haul off punch and elbow, right? But if we're doing this, he's gonna probably punch me too. Get that hand out and punch me, right? So now you pass it, you can pass it back to here, or you can, you know, clinch it up to here, right? You're not gonna stay here, right? And the one I did, because you did this, you went to the headlock, and that's kind of our instinct. I just wanna control your ugly head, right? <laughs> right? Boom. Shoe shine. Not worthy of witnessing the kung fu. That's one of a uh, common theme for us, right? Why is it uh why did why is it you know instinct to go at somebody's head? Well, it's not a picture of your driver's license. It's not a picture of your left testicle. <laughs> you might have a very unique left testicle. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, right? But we identify people with their face. So when you're mad at somebody, what are you mad at? You're the face. We're tool users. <laughs> so I want to put my tool on you and your face, right? But that, that's, that's the seed of human instincts, why we punch at the face, okay? So know that somebody who's mad at you, that's probably what they're going to do. They're not going to do the jump spinning ninja cartwheel scorpion kick of death or something. They're going to haul off and punch you, right? But train, you know, most of, you need to put most of your training into what's most likely to happen. You know, um, talking with somebody and they were doing this thing and, you know, what do you do against a thing, a guy with two knives? You know, because he was doing knife defense. And, I'm, and like, you know, and they would say like, what are the odds of that happening? Well, if it happens to you, it's 100%. True, you know, and, and that, that's true. And he says it, and he's a great martial artist. And, uh, and it's something you should train for. But I wouldn't put a lot of time into that, right? And he didn't. He spent the right amount of time going, look, what are the odds of this happening? Well, it happens. You got a video of a guy doing it, right? And I've seen a video of somebody doing it. But you, know, you want to put most of your training into what's most likely to happen, right? Um, so you know, what are the moves that happen on the street? Right? That, that's why one of the things I like about the clinch, right? You guys liking this stuff? Mm -hmm. And here's the deal. You, got, you get decent at this. And you got somebody who doesn't know, and some kid who just takes a big swing at you, right? Most people are one-handed, right-handed. Where are we? We're in that elephant again. I don't have the other hand but I'm still in the elephant, okay? I don't have to have the other hand to have the elephant, right? The first elephant you learn is on the cover of my other video, jab, cross, this is an elephant, okay? Is that the move we just did? Right, that's how to get there from, from punching, right? Now I can take it on this, oh, okay? But so many mean things to do, oops, oops, right? Oops, oops, okay? Give that elephant a little bit more of a try. Go ahead. Hard when he's big, man. He's got big arms. Yeah. Right. So, and both of you are pretty big. So, uh, there was a guy years ago in our class. Do you remember? Uh, you guys aren't from. You guys didn't go to BTTLF. Do you remember Blake? This guy looked like a balloon animal. He's so big, right? And I'm like, Blake, can I try something on you? He's like, sure. And I'm like, you know, it's like, there's no way I'm going to get that on him. You know, when people say size doesn't matter, like I said, size isn't everything, but you can't ring the Liberty Bell with a Q-tip, right? If little Monique is clinching with him, she's going to look like a baby koala bear clinging on a mommy, you know? So it's why we have... Firearms, <laughs> you know, because guys like you. Okay, you guys ready for the next one? Okay, we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna do the arm triangle. 
And this is where, uh, we'll go this way just because the camera's there. I'm going to switch your feet. We could do it the other way. But, um, this is where I did my first choke and I got in trouble. And I learned that head choke, which is sort of legal. I'm going to take this hand and I'm going to bump it. And I'm going to be in here, right? And so I was in here really trying to choke the guy. <laughs> and, uh, and the bell rang, and I still gave it a little extra squeeze, right? You're fighting. It's hard not. It's not that you're cheating. It's just you're so amped, right? And then the guy goes down the ground. He says something in Thai, and I'm trying to figure out what he said. And he's, he's like, that dog is choking me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm in trouble, right? <laughs> but uh, anyway, get this in here, right? You're here. Bump this. Close the distance. Do not do this. Do not do this in Muay Thai. Okay, you bob and weave in Muay Thai. Pick your moments, right? Tighten this up however you want. I can't knee him right now, right? Once you do this, remember that Motown we did with the knee? Motown. Leave, get that hand. See, how's that feel now? Yeah. yeah. Bam! And is he stretched? Yeah. Okay, so when we do this, and I didn't teach you with it with the hand. I don't think so. I just, we just did the Motown and kept them there, right? Shoot this. Close the distance violently. Do you hear the little thud? Okay. Close this, right? I don't care how you close this. Bump him. Make him keep that shape. If I come back and he comes back, well, now I'm here and now we're doing this. Go ahead. You tried to turn around and get me and I'm turning. And we end up doing this, right? He's trying to do headlocks and I'm trying to not let him do headlocks. And now we got to play that game, right? Vroom. Bang, 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 okay? Whirl. That's an easy throw now, too, right? Okay, arm triangle, go ahead. <clears throat> so bump that arm up over. Oh, you, now you, yeah, yeah, so if, yeah, you pick one. You ended up with both of his arms, and you might be able to do that, but I did it with one. So we were 50-50, that's why you didn't get it. Oh, 50-50. Yeah, one in, one out, one in, one out. Now bump his inside arm. There you go. Yeah, get it in deep. So when I say deep, guys, I want you to do this. Everybody remember, I dream, a, uh, I dream a genie? Right? The second hottest TV celebrity in the 70s. Second hottest? Second. Elizabeth Montgomery. Marianne from Gilligan's Island, dude. <laughs> the answer to Ginger versus Marianne is I would I would step on Ginger to get to Marianne. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So take take this outside arm. There you go. Now shoot in. Boom. Yeah. And if you can get this, get this, get this. This is so much tighter. No, nope, put this in here. Yeah. Up yours. Make a wish, right? So both. Now you put this over his face. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now grab his head with the other one. There you go. Put it on his side. There you go. Feels pretty nasty for him. Now, make a little bump. Now, when you come back, put a hand there to keep a, his hip down. Yeah, good. Now knee him. Bing, bing, bing. Yeah. Ideally, guys, I want to be kneeing. Matt, let me use you for a second. I want to be kneeing this side. I don't want to be kneeing. Guys, watch. I don't want to be, guys, watch. I don't want to be kneeing this side. Why? You got a hand there. Okay? So when we're in here and I bump him and I keep this shape, <laughs> he ain't blocking that with the other side. All right? Go ahead. Yeah, and man, if you like throws, this is so there, right? Boom, right, all you gotta do is turn. Turn, <laughs> and he's, right. Oops. Sorry, I turned. That's one. So, get her there again. Okay. We'll be nice. Okay, I want you to do the Motown backwards. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh, she's just, right? she's, she's swearing at you. She's swearing, she's praying in Russian now. She's Russian. <laughs> I can swear Russian curse on me. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boom. Right. So when I'm in here with this, right? We're here. Right. And I got this. And I make this. See how I have that right at the hip? 
right? When I throw him, this is going to be bad, right? I let my hand, but you see what, hap what happens if I keep my foot on your foot? Right, you're twisting something, either your ankle or your knee, and, right? Right, you're defenseless. Hey, guys, that could have totally been, you know, if we're, if that's a street fight, <laughs> we grab, we, grab, we can just, you know, we just take this for a walk, right? <laughs> grab it and take it for a walk. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> can't do that in Muay Thai, but, you know, you learn this stuff, and then you say, okay, well, if that was, what kind of nasty stuff could I do there if that was for real, right? That's a bad one, right? <laughs> okay, you got that one? Yeah. Okay. Next one is, uh, Matt, we'll do is the buffalo. So we're here. So let me explain the buffalo first. Because uh, I had learned this throw in karate, jab cross. I learned this throw in karate, and we're doing this, right? And you kind of throw the guy, okay? And I wasn't getting it, right? I didn't like to throw because I never get it. Now, I'm going to imitate my teacher a little bit here, not to be, hope that doesn't come across as, you know, because everybody gets offended today. I, I, I love my teacher. And sometimes the language barrier made things better to learn. And when I kind of imitate, some people say, I know who you learned what from by who you're imitating right now, right? So Mr. Dang, right, goes, okay, you, you buffalo, buffalo. Okay, buffalo, buffalo, head, head, the, shoo, shoo, okay, saying horns, right? But he, he doesn't know the English name for horns, right? He's okay, buffalo, him strong boy, you cannot, cannot, okay, you, chalat, chalat, chalat means smart, you, lock, okay, okay, can, chalat, right? Take the horn, move the lever, don't try to throw the bull under the horn, pull the horn over the bull. Okay, so when we're here doing this, and sometimes I'll do this from here, right? That I get this little bit of space, right? So I just, I backed out a little bit, okay? Pull him over. And I, a lot of times I'll do this, we're in here, ready? Clinch up. That I got a knee. And when I take my knee, I run with that. See, I use this run and start, okay? If that's the street, kick, kick, I love this, right? <laughs> On the sidewalk, that's so bad, and so is that. Right? Smack his elbow, smack his head, right? Don't do that in the ring, don't do that in class, it's the dick move, right? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> okay, so you're in here, and the buffalo I want you to do is you're just gonna disengage here, right? And I'm gonna pull his head down, and I'm gonna throw the horn over, but watch, see how I step with it? Okay, and I'm gonna start with that, that step, oh, I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run with that move. Okay, set him down slow. Okay, one more time. Boom, that kind of gets me that line, right, that he's a little bit bent over. If he's straight up and I do this, well, that's salsa dancing, right? <laughs> that's, that's a different class, okay? <laughs> Boom, look at his body posture. When I set my leg down, I'm running. I'm running this way. Okay, go. Thank you. Right, so have that help. So we're here, 50. Right, I already have this kind of waiting. Oh, that, oh, she ain't thinking about this right now. And no. I'm going to run with this. Now, see how she stood up? Okay, so I have the elephant now on the other side. Then I drowned him. Right? Okay, okay. And here's the deal. I didn't know she wasn't going to turn for that, but it connects so naturally, right? So it'll be harder for us to, to re replicate that because we were here, right? Yeah. I'm here. I run. She doesn't fall. <laughs> right. So, guys, just because something came up. Guys, hold up for a second. Again, this is level two, but something came up, okay? So we're in here, okay? And boom. And I go to throw her, but she just spins. I go to an elephant. Right? That's your elephant. It's just the trunk and it's a lever. Okay? So you guys can try that. If you end up there, boom. I went to throw her, but see how she's, if she's bent over, that's not going to happen. But if she's not all the way bent over and you do that, and she tries to save her balance, 
Cover her face, not worthy of witnessing to Kung Fu. Right? Does this look like, uh, let me ask you something. Does this look like anything in a karate form, maybe? No, that stuff doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you'll like some of the stuff I do later on. Yeah. Go ahead. We could take a lot of the moves we did today. There's a lot of karate in there. I take the Aiki Jitsu too. Yeah. Yep. So I have an Aiki Jiu Jitsu teacher I bring in here for seminars. That's the other guy he videotapes for. Yeah. That's a thinking man. No, almost. So have the 50 50. Okay. So, no. So, yeah, okay. So now uh, you're going to, you got to take that other arm. No, you're going to grab his, you put, your, put your hand on his elbow. Okay. Now, so let me, uh, here, do, do, the, do this, do lined up with, line up with me, wherever we are. Whichever side you want to do. Okay, so you got. So you're gonna do this. Have the hand on this elbow. Nope, this elbow. Right, uh, right on the elbow. Okay, knee. Okay, step, lift that elbow, and bring it right. Now this guy's standing. So let's say he's staying straight up. We go ahead, spin with this so you don't fall. Well, then I close line his face and I throw him that way. Right, and that could be little Jack Horner sticking your thumb in his eye and you know. Yeah. <laughs> Nose yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This people. I try to stay off the mouth. People will bite you. Even when I'm teaching police and military guys, stay off the mouth. I don't know what kind of diseases this guy's got. There's going to be blood and stuff. You know, it's it's a little something actually to think about in your training. I'm not going to think about it in the fight, but if my training's built around that, and it's not perfect, but it helps. Okay. The last one, and uh, we'll see if my hip. Uh, well, I, I've had a surgery and I had a little, some, some side effects. I'm still healing with stuff. The last one is called the leg belt. And what I want to do, remember we had the arm belt? Now we have the leg belt. Let's see if it goes. Hmm. That doesn't feel good to me. But, so he's kneeing, right? Go ahead, knee. Right, he's kneeing, right, he can't. Okay, because I've got, watch where this is. My foot is actually a little higher than my knee. Okay, and I'm riding here. So while he's kneeing, go ahead, start kneeing, right? Bing, 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 bing. We have our pirate punch, okay? Let's get the leg belt, the pirate punch. We'll add a couple of throws to that. And then uh, we'll do some Q&A. We're probably around that two. How long did I say we would be? Two hours. Two hours, right? And we probably have a half hour for Q&A or other modes of violence. So go ahead, get the leg belt. And then with the pirate punch. Yeah, so you need your foot higher than your knee. Hook your foot, in, put your foot in his pocket. Now put your knee down. Yeah, see how much weight you got? Yeah. The foot has to be higher than the knee. I want you guys to have your weight on him. Remember we talked about the us stance? You might be too small for me to do this on, right? Guys, don't have your leg like this. This is work. This is work. I'm here. Now it's work for her. You feel, I'm resting on her. Yeah. Ping, 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 ping. Okay. Say ping, that's not a bonk. That's a bing move. Bing, bing, bing. The long side, if wrong side. And you can't stay there forever. But I see, you know, people say it doesn't work. I go, watch Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. I used to do it in ring all the time. But on my deadly street move, you will never. <laughs> And if he's kneeing and hopping you around, you just hop. You got three legs. You, his one and your one and his two. <coughs> okay. Yep, go ahead, keep going, guys. If you can add the pirate punch, add the pirate punch. Bing, bing, bing. Swing it. Yep. Think like you're putting your foot right in his pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See all that weight you got on him now? Yeah. Right? You can't stay there all day. You know, if the guy knows leg locks or something like that, you know. You, if you're in an MMA fight, you could get away with a few of these, you know. On the street, even more, right? Corn pop, don't do heel hooks. Okay. 
Uh, I'm going to use you for the throws because I could probably catch you. Because <laughs> I could catch you, you don't have to fall. Okay, so when we're here in this uh, leg shield, she's kneeing me, right? Bing, bing, bing. When this leg comes up, I'm going to kick it through. So you just knee, knee, knee. See what I did? I'm catching her. But you would go. Now it looks like swing dancing for assholes, right? Okay? So I'm here. Knee, knee. I don't even let her put it down. Kick it out, right? Go slow with your partner. If you got a bad knee, let's don't do it, you know? Okay? Go ahead. So he, he does it. So you throw your right knee. Throw your right knee. For, yeah, whoop. You're all right. You see how that comes, right? You'll be able to feel, right? When he does that, and you just go, kick. I don't want to dump people on the ground. Once you're in the ring, I'll be really mean. But, you know, in class, you don't need to be a d dick. So, now kick it across. There you go. That easy, right? Let me tell you how fast a guy will fall when you do this for real. I had a guy years ago, um, I'm trying to think of his name, Roger. And he had the guy with this and he went, boom, and he's looking because you're looking at the guy's face. And he went, like the guy didn't even think about it, but his foot it didn't hit him hard, but he got kicked in the face a little bit. Okay, ready for the next one? This one you can't do a Muay Thai. Okay? It's an accident. Okay? <laughs> so that was off this leg. Now we're going to do one off this leg. So she's kneeing away. One, two, three. When that one comes oh. back, right? Yeah. I'll pick you up a little bit with this one. That's Because right. what I want to do, I'm going to do like a Harai Gosh. So you just keep kneeing. She's knee, knee, knee. Right? When that one comes back, oh, I've got the timing off. Yeah. Good. Knee, 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 knee. Vroom. Right? You, you kind of want that. Haraya Ghosh. So slowly, and I won't throw you. She knees, and when she puts her, no, just knee, when she puts her leg back, I follow it to here. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Yeah, got okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> so when that leg goes back, follow it. Right there, look at it. Yeah. So even, it, right, so that's a hip throw, Tayotosh. Haraya Ghosh, I just want him on his ass, right? Nope. Yeah, so that one goes back. And then I follow it. So, no, so don't put your leg behind her. Don't put it behind so her, in between them? So come on over go here, I'm going to use you, okay? So guys, let's look at some of the differences with this throw here. She has left foot forward, okay? Guys, hold up, hold up, Matt. Yeah, okay. I can be... Across her feet here, and this feels like Tayo Tosh. See how I yep. straighten out my leg? Okay? Yep. Right? It can be Haraya Gosh. Okay? I mean, I don't care what type of throw you're doing here. Okay? Because people go, oh, that's not Haraya Gosh. That was, you know, he's a Garuma. I don't care. Right? But that knee just came down. It comes down, right? And I put my foot down. Okay, so and I throw her over. That would be like more like a Tayo Tosh. Okay. If her leg comes down and I'm in the air, right? And you just hook it. Up. That right. So I'm I'm literally just doing a teeter totter. Whoom. Yep. Right? And that's why I picked her so I can carry her. <laughs> she had to fall. Because I don't want to try to hold up you heavy guys and hurt my hurt some more. Right? Okay. You can still get it if you just have one. Yep, that's called Uchimada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Monique. <laughs> Carrier carryable throw person. <laughs> Give me the scarecrow or something first. Okay. So, even, so even, the, we usually practice our throws from the scarecrow. I'm basically just here now in the scarecrow. He said, can you get it if you're in between their legs? Yes, it's called Uchimata. I'll go slow. Okay. That's Uchimata. Okay. Still works. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, have the you gotta have the leg belt. You gotta have the leg belt. Right. So so if he puts that leg back, put your foot down. Right, now turn, turn this way. Right. So now it ended up looking almost more like an osotogake. Right? I don't care. As long as the guys know. Right? The one when you cross across the legs. Yep. That one that you like. That yep. Hurts. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. I like her. I go. Yeah. And it's kind of puts that person right there. Yep. Bam. It's not working. Yeah. <laughs> the other ones when you throw them away from you, you get yep. okay. Plus, when we talk about arm bars on the street, Matt, can I use you for a second? Uh, so if he's down, right? I don't join him on the ground to do an arm bar. I turn, he's not worthy of witnessing the Kung Fu. He might have a weapon in that, but I'm just gonna squat down on this. Gosh. And then you do the little, you know. <laughs> just to add insult to injury, right? <laughs> Lot of stuff here. Guys, this is our Muay Thai level, this is our clinch level one. Right, a little bit of some level two stuff, and then some tangents, and that's level one. And so, have to do one again. yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've only done. We only did clinch level two one time. We did that over at the Everett School, yeah. one time. But uh, you know, that's the thing. Like, it, it's take some time, learn this. How much more do you need? Mm -hmm. I never used to teach this much. We used to teach. Uh, we would teach all this attack stuff. And then we would teach this much, well, not even face push, that much, right? If you go home, that's what you need. Here's your attack stuff. You don't even need all that, right? You just saw the cheerleader today. You've been we, 10 years, 10 years. You just saw cheerleader today. Because I'm like, yeah, how can I make things smaller? What, what don't we need? Throw things out, make things smaller, right? But because today was on video, I thought I'd throw it in there. And this is all you really need for the defense. You need to eat it. If you eat it, you own it. And by the way, guys, I'm not telling anybody, eat, take the first knee. Because I know there's some, you know, super special forces, secret style, Krav Ninja Commando, something out there who's going to say, you know, I'm telling people to get hit with a knee and then do something with it. If you get hit with a knee, that's what you do, right? The eat it, own it, the belt, a couple ways of weaponizing the belt. That push pull, spike pass, face push. You can do this if you want. You don't have to. Right? I mean, just that right there. That's probably all you really need. You know? 50 50, all right. Even a lot of this stuff is still going to work in the 50 50. Right? Okay, it's just not, you know, this, it's, it's a little different. Right? Fun stuff? Yeah. We got a half an hour, or close to a half an hour. Um, you play with stuff. Hey, I don't remember this. I don't, I don't expect anybody to remember all that today. Like you said, hey, I need to take clinch level one again, right? Okay. I love playing with this stuff. Play with it. If you got questions, let me know, right? And like I said, now even tangents are even more acceptable because we finished the level one stuff, right? All right, guys. How's that ugly mother? The, the, the ugly baby? Yeah. Want to be the ugly baby? Why? All these people, when we talked about know, ugly baby, who did they look at? Yeah, right? Thanks. Yeah. I kicked your butt. Well, I'll, let me use Matt. <laughs> this, it looks right. So, when you bring somebody in, a lot, where, where are they? I don't want them here, because he might, oh, he might headbutt me by me. So, this is, a good, this is a good question, right? So, I don't want him here, so I put him off to the side somewhere, right? Even when we're here, right? I might bring him in, but I'll. I'll roll his head, because now, because the, the sides of your head are flat. So I have a better hold now. I don't want to hold him on with the roundness of his face. Plus, look what I could do to his neck. <coughs> right? When you hear that, you usually mean you're onto something good. Right? <laughs> or if I have him here, I roll him this way. This is the ugly baby, because I can't see him. Right? So I have the same thing going on in his neck. Another thing I like to do when we're in here is I'll throw him into my elbow. Right? So he can't breathe. Yeah. And this, and I still got, look at all the leverage I have on his neck here. Oops. <laughs> Elbow. Like, I just elbowed him in the neck. Whenever right? anybody has my mouth like that, I get lost you, you panic. You make a lot of mistakes. You panic. Right? You panic. Yeah. Right? And when you release it, what's the first thing he's going to do? <gasps> right? Just, you just make this horror show just get worse and worse. <laughs> right? Like you thought, oh. 
Like the worst is over. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> right, right. Just you keep, you get them in hell and leave them there. Just every move you do. Like once you, like I said, once you learn these things, go. Did my hand pass his face? All right. How serious is it? Do I want to punch him? Do I want to, you know? Because, you know, that, that's the thing. You want to have a, 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 a different, you know, levels of force for the situation. You know, we say, you know, people say. I don't want to grapple in a fight. Maybe you do. You know, if, you don't, if I know how to grapple and the other guy doesn't, that's a great place to be, okay? If my friends are there yeah. or nobody's there. If his friends are there, no. Because you got people go, yeah, none of that Brazilian jiu-jitsu crap. And I've seen that. Mm -hmm. There's a video of this teenage kid. This guy's picking on him. and The kid gets in the mouth and he's just controlling the kids. They're like, hey, man, come here, let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Come on, man, fight fair, fight fair, fight fair. And he's like, and people are getting in. He's like, I'm going to have to let this guy up because people are going to hit me because they don't like the way I'm winning. Okay? So it might be that. But, then, you know, I would grapple with somebody when I don't want to hurt them. You know, you got Uncle Bob is, uh, you know, a little too drunk at the <laughs> wedding and stuff like Grandma's birthday or whatever like that, and you don't want to drop elbows in his chick. Let's, you do, but you shouldn't, right? <laughs> and, but, so you smother him and you subdue him, right? So you hold on to him. He tires himself out. You can control somebody without hurting him. When do you grapple? People say, well, grappling's not a good place to fight, so that's why I don't do it. Well, now you're an idiot because the fight chooses you. You don't get to choose the fight, right? The, you know, the fight chooses you. That fight goes on the ground and you don't like ground fighting, you better know that Jiu-Jitsu Houdini stuff to be able to get back up on your feet. And that's something that we do different with our Jiu-Jitsu is, like uh, I was at this seminar with this guy who was doing escapes. I'm like, yeah, because I love escapes, right? I'm all about, you know, defense. And every escape he had was pulling guard. Every escape he had was pull guard, pull guard, pull guard, pull guard, pull guard, pull guard. Okay, that's great at a tournament. But what about when you want that grappling for self-defense? Because my kids do disengage. You guys want to show a disengage for the kids? Because I bet you could do it. Sure. So you're on the bottom and the mount. You're going to sit on her. Matt, you can sit on her. Yeah. So put your feet that way. Okay. So you sit on her and the mount. Okay. She's going to do a bridge and roll, but here's what she's going to do. She's going to throw you one way, and then she's going to roll the... No, so you just stood up. Roll the other way, right, at least right, something to create distance to get up, right? And we have, like, the kickstand. We have the quick stand. We have, you know, um, child's pose and stand, and all, right? But, you know, like, you've got him off, make space. You don't have to follow him, and now you're in the top guard. You're even in the worst... You're, 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 it's not a... The, it's not a worse position, but it's still a bad position, right? You're going to keep grappling with Brian? No. She wants to, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and here's the deal. If you saw somebody that big and he doesn't know any martial artists, he doesn't know any martial arts, do you want to grapple with him? Because, you, you, and here's the deal. Someone's about to find out the hard way that the big guy also knows how to fight, right? That's, right, because, I mean, that, that, so I'm, I'm glad we're friends, right? <laughs> okay. But uh, plus, like I said, we get to work on it with him because if it works on Brian, because you're the biggest guy we got today. But we've had, uh, we had Sean, 6'5", 365. Um, no, that was Kenny. Kenny was 6'5", 365. Sean was 6'8", 418. And then we, and we, had, um, uh, we had this other guy, Kez, um, was a college basketball player, 7'1". That was great. His first fight, we come out, and it's a, uh, because it's like a smoker thing. And it's, you know, the, the, the ring's like this high, so everybody can see. But the thing is, the other guy's in the ring, and Kez comes walking out, and he's almost as tall as the other guy, but he hasn't stepped up into the ring yet. <laughs> so as soon as, I was looking at the guy's face, because, you know, Kez is behind the curtain, and I'm looking at the guy, we come out, what's he going to be like when he looks at Kez, right? And he's just like, like you, saw, <laughs> you saw him give up right there. But I mean, he's got to suck. I don't want to fight somebody who's seven foot one. You know, that's a whole lot of reach to overcome. That's a seminar we'll do someday. We'll do a seminar call on strategy. Two things you got to do with strategy. Identify his advantage. Eliminate his advantage. What are advantages? He's got strength, right? One of the things, if I got somebody fighting you, I'm going to tell, I want you moving. Gas is his enemy because mm -hmm. he's a big guy. He can lift a lot. He's real scary for a minute, Right? He's going to be super scary for a minute. And after that, he's got to pay some, he's in the fight. But that first minute, he's, 
a big Tasmanian devil on crack. <laughs> Am I wrong? Right? I mean, I've, I've been in the corner and watched him that, that first fight and front kick that guy right in the face. As soon as he walked out, guys, oh, boom, you know? But uh, cause I don't think he thought you were going to hit him from that far away. And good, that's not a big guy move, right? right. Were you there for that one? But, uh, you know, how do you fight somebody with reach? We'll do some of that with... Um, one of the seminars I want to do is constructive blocking. Another one I want to do is destructive blocking. Everybody knows destructive blocking, so he hands up and he's throwing a punch, right? Bing! And I do stuff like I try to block with the tip of my elbow, right? That's destructive blocking. He throws that punch. This is constructive blocking. So he threw that punch. Can he reach me? And I can't reach him. So for most people, this is no man's land. Hold it out there. Mm -hmm. But if you know this type of stuff, now I got a position on him, right? Oh, I got a position on him. Right, we'll do that with punches and kicks, right? That you stay out of range, but you still get the fight. So now you just purchased no man's land, right? Constructive blocking, destructive blocking, and they fall into all the simultaneous counter attack the attack type ideas. We just did a seminar called Stick and Move. I don't know if you saw it on YouTube or not, but somebody said that's like the best dirty boxing I've ever seen. I go, dude, that's not my dirty boxing. When when we fight dirty, yeah, we fight dirty. We fight real dirty. Uh, we had a seminar for, and we called it Fighting Dirty, this one woman wanted us to do. And uh, I said, part of my goal when you leave here is to, I want you thinking a little less of me as like a human being, like, well, I didn't think anybody would just go that low. Because I will, right? I want it to be that, you know, spitting in their face and hitting them. And now that I'm missing some teeth, I don't even have to open up my mouth this bad. I can just go, <laughs> surprise, right? <laughs> but that spit in the face and hit them, that was my first karate move. That was my first martial art move as a kid, five years old. Bully on the bus, you know, said I was going to get somebody after him because my, you know, my family member knew karate. And he goes, this is what you're going to do. And I'm like, that's stupid. I wanted to learn the Mr. Spock, you know, <laughs> thing. So that's what I thought I was going to learn. You know, I was five, you know. Worked for, you know, Spock. You know, he's like, I want you to spit in his face, kick him in the balls, left, right, left, right, as fast as you can. <laughs> if I get in a fight today, it's what I'm going to do. Only now my groin kick has really good form. You know, okay. So, um, but that was a good, what was the question you had with that? Oh, we had the head, the ugly baby. So you guys can try that. So bring his head in here, right? You don't, bring it here. This is a bad place to be, right? But now it's easy to roll it, right? You roll it to the baby, you roll it to the ugly baby, or you put it in your elbow. Go ahead. If someone ugly babies you, what do you want to do? Ooh, let's do this and then we'll do, then okay. we'll do that. Yep. You can tell when you got it when your partner's well, talking to you, I got, I got, and they're like that, right? Their voice changes. Hey, everybody play with that a little bit? Okay. What do you do when somebody ugly babies you? Because it's a neck crank. So let's have the big giant guy. I'm here. He's got the side of my head and he's doing this, right? Number one, see this posture? This is bad for me. Try to get this because now already my neck's not getting cranked, okay? If I can't, I might make some space here and do that far side. So see how I take, I'm going to take my chin and my hand and use it as a far side elbow move, okay? So again, he ugly babies me, and crank my neck a little, right? That hurts. If I do this, he's not cranking my neck anymore, right? It's when I'm like this, go ahead a little bit, oh, all right? Get underneath, okay? That and or, right? He's got my, go ahead, he's gonna ugly baby me a little bit. I'm gonna use my chin and my elbow to get that far side, and then I'm over the top, right? And even when you're here, this is a good headlock escape too, right? But when you're here, all this, all this knee stuff you do, push away, oh, right? And here's the deal, so he doesn't like that, so he's probably gonna bend it. Well, now you've got, right? Now you just go into, the, right, you gotta come up, right? Okay, so try that, get your posture back, okay? 
And then, whether you get your posture back or not, use your chin to help that far side. <clears throat> and then I try to I stuff it and pass it. Go ahead. So this is a good level, level two, level three type of move. Reach across. Yeah. Right. And then drown in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I only know that's, the kid names. Hey, but, but you remember them. And that's how the kid, when I come up with those silly names, the kids remember them. Yeah, guys, don't put a lot of pressure on this one. There's a whole nother seminar we call Cobra Chiropractic. Right? I, 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 you've heard, I didn't come up with that name. I got to get that one, Casey K. Kaisen. I don't even know how to say your last name. I always mess it up. But he's uh, a police officer in, uh, in Minnesota and uh, wrestling background, martial arts, stuff like that. So, um, you know, if you ever want, you know, figure out, like, what do you want out of a good teacher? Who knows how to fight? Find somebody with a, a cop who had a wrestling and boxing background. That would be a really good teacher, right? Okay, because they also understand real violence. Mm -hmm. And the best ways to move a body, I think wrestlers are really underrated. Best way to hit a body, boxing. I tell people, learn boxing first. Think of Muay Thai as your boxing expansion set, right? Learn to add your kicks and knees and elbows and other stuff to your boxing, right? Because I know guys we've trained, uh, one of my guys, Max, his first fight was awesome because he fought this dude who was jacked. And uh, Max just totally pummeled this kid. And, um, but what was really hard for Max and was uh, to throw kicks. When you're out there in your first fight and you're nervous, the last thing you think is, hey, maybe I'll stand on one leg for this. That, that takes a little extra training to actually throw that kit. And you, could, you can tell yourself whatever you want in the gym. Right? One of the reasons I tell people to compete, you got to be able to fight with this guy. But, 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 and you're nervous. I just did a podcast. Um, it'll be on YouTube with uh, Randy King Live. And we were talking about pros and cons of competition. And something I'll tell the kids, if you ask my kids, what's the number one reason I want you to compete? They'll say something along the lines of, I want you to be okay with being nervous. Because if you get into a fight, you're going to be nervous, right? And you got to work with that body. You guys remember, you guys remember Brandy? Her, you remember her first two fights? I don't think I saw her. She, she, and she's one of the, she was one of the best people in the gym. Form was awesome. I said, man, because I've wanted to do instructional videos for years. I said, man, when we do tie pads, I want you to be one hitting. Because her Muay Thai looks better than mine. Because I got boxing mechanics and karate mechanics and kung fu and weird stuff, you know. I'm just hitting, right? She only has the Muay Thai and it looked real good. Her first two fights, she went out there looking good and everything like that, confident. Didn't throw a single punch or kick. Sat there, stood there just standing up getting hit for three rounds. I got to play until you get punched in the face. Yeah, well here's the deal, but she, you know, she froze. Third fight, she went out there and kicked butt. Now she fights pro. She's in Thailand right now. I don't know how long she plans on staying, but it's for a while. But she's in Thailand training now. So, but, but that's the thing. Once she got over that mental, and, and people who've never felt that, that's a big thing for them. Right? And I tell, you know, I tell the kids, like, you're not a coward because you feel that way. It doesn't mean you're a chicken. You know, I tell, hey, when I go out there, even to do kata, I'm nervous. And they think, well, if my teacher's nervous, it's got to be okay for me to be nervous. And now they're less nervous, right? Be okay with being nervous because that's the body you're going to have to, to fight with, right? And you freeze, you know? And that's why some of these, you know, high-end, you know, uses energy against them, fine motor skill things don't work, right? Go find out who you, who you are in a fight. And even though, I was, even though I have an idea about that, we had a guy, uh, I won't mention his name, a friend of mine who um, he did some time in jail. I'm okay with what he went to jail for. Somebody, another guy hurt his uh, niece, right? And um, so he attacked the guy. It's not the legal thing to do. I'm okay with him doing it, but it wasn't the legal thing to do. He spent some time in jail, right? And he was at one of my seminars, and we were talking about that. And somebody's like, ah, blah, 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 blah. And like, you know, and you could tell that guy never had a fight, you know? And my friend says, dude, he goes, you don't know who you are in a fight till you fought for your life or your virginity. He goes, and that's coming from me. Right? And also, they got to do shut up. Right? I mean, think about, you know, that you, but you start, like I say, it starts with go do a kata. One of the things I tell the ladies in the fitness kickboxing class, they start, start coming into Muay Thai, they start doing karate, 
You know, one of the things they say, nobody stays into this for the reasons they started. Right? Everybody starts for something and then they stay with it because it's changed their life. And you've heard that story probably a million times because you had a karate school. Right? And uh, it changes your life. But I tell people, you want a good life changer? Learn a kata. Go to a tournament. Get up there in front of people. How's it going to change my life? Shut up and do it and find out. Right? Because you learn something. You know, some people are proud that they just learned a skill. Now, if you're going to go up there and compete, you're going to work at it. You're going to make it look good. Right? It, you always want it better, but you know. And, uh, but just to get up there and have the, the, those nerves and those butterflies. How nervous were you? It's up there just doing kata. So nervous I did two different ones. So two different, you did different ones. It's because she tied. She had a tie score with somebody else. She had to come up and do it again because she did her kata, right? She did a bow kata. I'm like, oh, there's a new kata, right? You know, but people make mistakes. But she hit it well. And so she had a tie. She had to come up with somebody and do it again. I'm like, hmm, I wonder what kata she's going to do. The one she did last time or the one she's supposed to do? No, the new third kata. I've never seen it before, right? <laughs> But the thing is, you, you made your mistakes and you kept going. We're, you know, we're trying to be live today, right? I could totally make mistakes, and I'm okay with making mistakes. I laugh at myself, you know? It's one of the best ways to get over your mistakes. Don't take yourself too, too seriously. Did you guys have fun today? Yes. I want to do the make, make a circle. We didn't bow in, but I'd like to do a little bit of a bow out. Because like I said, uh, this, you know, I... I have my own little interpretations of this stuff, but it's all passed down to me from, you know, 90% of this is Mr. Dang and another teacher, Mr. Leck. Um, that was at Muay Thai Institute in Patum Thani, Thailand. It's, um, so it's called Muay Thai Institute. It also ranks its, ranks its stadium. You can fight at that stadium. You live at the school stadiums right at the end of the street. You fight there. Your friends can be watching. You're getting your ass kicked at back here in the States, right? But um, Mr. Amnoy runs the school. And when the last time I was there, he was, you know, 70-something. He'd be walking around squeezing his soccer ball, right? Some young guy, would, he, if he saw you, oh, come here, come here, I want you to play clinch with me. And you're just going to be, you know. And, and you're like, God, this guy's like in his 70s, man. But when he grabs you with that vice grip because you've been squeezing on soccer balls for 50 years, you're clinched, right? All right, so if you guys have any type of bow you do for your, Style, I don't care. It's Muay Thai, we do this way. It's called the Y, right? All right, thanks, guys. It was fun for me.